In terms of events that students should prioritize during their first year, I highly recommend attending those initial seminars that the Career Service puts out. Um, they were extremely helpful in helping me figure out where to gain experience, where to look, and kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do with my master's program. For me personally, I would not have uh, accomplished much or have been where I am right now without faculty mentors. Um, the, the biggest thing you can do is you know, email anybody that, might, that you might have a remote interest in working with or speaking to. Um, one of the best things about SIS are the professors are very open to speaking especially during their office hours and, and also outside of office hours if you need to schedule an appointment. Seeking out mentors is an extremely important thing uh, to do. I would say AU has a very, very generous list of highly qualified professors that are impressive in their own right, but then you go to their classroom and you find that they're even more dedicated and engaging with their students. So finding one isn't hard, it's picking one that you love the most, I think. During my first year, I really prioritized my outside the classroom experiences, specifically my internships. And I think that that's an important thing to do, especially in your first year as you get grounded in DC. Good and close relationship with my peers, fellow students who are in the same program. So it was uh, uh, really good to help each other out, you know, uh, to work together, to study together and then to exchange ideas. I was glad that I had to finish all these required courses in my first year so that I can uh, explore the things that I want to do um, and then focus on what I want to, wanted to do in my second year. Um, so I would definitely uh, focus on um, required courses in my first year. During my time at SIS during my first year, something I really strongly um, prioritized was becoming more um, politically and actively engaged in politics to bring change. Um, and this can, and this happens on a micro and macro level. So this happened in terms of like with your cohort, um, your fellow students, they have, you know, an infinite amount of knowledge from discussions to kind of um, making change to going to protest to, you know, being in that activism state, I think, is very um, important, especially when we're talking about advocacy and what we can do. And this kind of entails, like, not only the sense of community that you actually build with your cohort at SIS, but also kind of the community that you hope to build, whether it's domestically or internationally, in terms of um, coming together with other people to for the fight of social justice and international service. Networking in DC uh, can be, I think, overwhelming. I moved across the country and had not experienced the DC network life until I, I started at AU. I think that the biggest piece of advice I got and something that really helped me um, is to not be worried about it and to understand that everyone else is doing it as well. And that it's not just about gaining something or getting something out of someone. It's really about building meaningful relationships, both in your personal and professional life. I think the best first step for networking is actually getting to know your peers. Um, your peers come from various um, fields. They come from different parts for, for those who have like work professional experience or for anyone who has like different experiences straight from undergrad or they have may had you know, changes in careers. Um, so that's definitely the first step is getting to know your peers because they really will help you and they are your support system. A good first step is getting on the newsletters or distribution list of every single think tank you think is applicable to your interests. Um, therefore, you're aware of the think tank events that are going on. And I'm tailoring this towards think tanks because I tend to be more of a research oriented scholar. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be think tanks. It could be NGOs or other organizations that types of organizations that interest you. Make sure I would advise to, make, to, to attend as much uh, conferences and, and workshops uh, out there in their respective fields of study. I think that's uh, a very good way to start. Knowing that you yourself as a student are in a very special position um, to help, to help these leaders in DC achieve their dreams, knowing, knowing your value as a student is, is very important in even beginning to say hello. If you can kind of keep up with the probably like academic trend um, that you can get from the classes and everything 
and if you can provide those kind of information, hey, oh, I read this paper and this is very popular in academic field, probably like professional world people would appreciate that opinion. Um, hey, my professor said this, um, or hey, I have this professor who worked on this and probably you might wanna see him or something. Um, so try to come up with that you can provide something as well. Uh, not only that you're providing resume and try to look for a job. Part of it is just getting out of your head and just going to network as is, or even let's say you don't have a particular goal in mind when you're going to network, making those connections, just making the step forward just to go attend the event, maybe get to know one person or two people at max can definitely help. If you haven't necessarily had the opportunity to have an internship or any sort of work professional experience um, that's specifically targeted in international relations, um, a good kind of uh, foundation to start off with is actually volunteering. There's a lot of organizations that you can actually volunteer with. Um, actually, an organization I'll just kind of put out there is you can become a United Nations volunteer. Um, and it's really great. You get to you know work on different projects depending on your specialization or what you want to do. And um, from that, you can actually build a network and it will give you the opportunity to kind of expand on what you know already with international relations and help you with internships. So when I first came to SIS, I didn't really have much of a background in international affairs outside of just going to classes. So what I did was I actually was awarded an assistantship in which I got to do research and teaching support for a number of different faculty here at SIS. So if you have the opportunity, highly recommend taking the opportunity. And even if you don't have it, there's often research projects that come up throughout the semester that professors will ask students to work on. So I would definitely go to Career Research Center uh, if you're looking for any type of job or internship. Um, other than that, uh, talking to the second years and who, are, who just did the summer internship was very helpful. Um, even though you were not interested in a specific position that they did, um, they can definitely give you tips that, hey, you don't want to do this or you might want to do this uh, in terms of applications and interview process. I have a list of uh, organizations that are working on the areas that you are interested in and then follow on those organizations regularly, get email alerts, subscribe to their newsletters. and. Um, such kind of uh, opportunity notifications, get a connection, a network from that organization and then try to get an internship opportunity when that is available. In my experiences, um, you know, the Career Center has always been you know, open and uh, been really helpful with information that either, they're either helpful with information that I could not have found on my own or if they don't have the information, then they direct me to a student um, or a faculty member that might have that information for me. Another great way to sort of balance from internship to internship might be once you have that first internship, uh, the likelihood is that there will be other interns with you. And therefore it's important to network with those interns, inter network with your peers, because they would have had, in they would have had internships that might have interested you as well. Making sure that you're taking opportunities that are really going to lead to better opportunities definitely uh, comes from illustrating to that company or that government agency what you can do. Uh, I interned the summer between my first and second year with USAID and the connections that I built that summer led to me getting a contracting job with the same bureau within the agency a year later. So I think the best way to do that is to, yes, show up every day, do your best work. Of course, you really want to show what you can do in your day-to-day -day work life, but it is also about building personal connections and relationships with people in the office. So in your first internship in international affairs, make sure that you're going above and beyond to help everyone in the office and show your not only your willingness to do work, but your commitment to the work at hand. And by showing those two qualities and by continuing relationships with that office, even six months after you finished your internship, it can lead to really incredible opportunities down the road because you'll maintain, uh, maintain those relationships and, and they'll remember you in their minds. And I can also say there's nothing better than a handwritten thank you note. So 
if you want to leave a lasting impression, uh, making sure you do those little things for an office or for individuals that you work with, you'll really stick, stick in their mind as someone that they want to work with in the future, which can lead to better opportunities for you down the road.